What's going on, everybody? It's Childish. We're back at it again, coming at you with another video for Skylanders Ring of Heroes. Today, patch 1.0.7 has finally dropped, so it's time to take a look at the newest Nat 4 in the game, Nightfall. In today's video, we're going to take a look at his skills, his abilities, give you guys an idea of how I would go about building him, and then we're going to be hopping into the dungeon, taking on the boss, and then take a look at the exchange shop so you guys can see what you can purchase uh, with the points that you're going to be collecting over time. So, Without further ado, let's get right into it here. Nightfall, the Dark Element Skylander here. Um, this is going to be an expert, so we're going to be sitting with 9 Endurance. He has two different abilities uh, in addition to a passive and a leader skill. So the first skill that we're taking a look at, Handy Hooks, it's going to swing a hook claw at the enemy, and then if attack lands as a critical hit, we'll cast Diminish on the target for four turns, which is actually a pretty high counter uh, comparison to some of the other uh, Diminish uh, units out there, units with the Diminish ability. So for those that don't know, essentially it is a dot that uh, does damage based on the amount of attack you have. So obviously you guys already know we're going to be attacking a fair amount of we're going to be stacking a fair amount of attack on this unit so that we can get uh, a little bit more value out of it. Okay. So again, uh, the second skill, Bad Hair Day, which by the way, can we just stop right there and take a look? G give some give some shouts out to Comptos and this Predator looking dude uh, is just amazing. I ain't gonna lie, like I'm, I love this character. I, I'm, I'm just stop everything. I love the character. I love the detail that he put into the secret dungeon. I mean, everything uh, from the storyline to the boss stage, the just the animations. It's really cool, guys. I'm actually, I'm really excited to show you. Okay, so the second skill, getting back to it here, this skill does damage, does greater damage in proportion to the number of diminished effect uh, counts she has. Okay, so what I want to point out here also. Uh, we will uh, we'll, we'll figure out the damage multipliers down the road here, but uh, you know a lot of the scales or a lot of the abilities out there, you know they'll say you know this attack deals damage in proportion to whatever, right? But this one actually says deals greater damage uh, in proportion to the number of diminished uh, effect accounts. So I'm not sure if that greater uh, prefix has any play on this, but you know once we get this one built up, we'll definitely test this out and see what we could do here, right? Now again, this uh, this passive here is really what makes this unit shines when the critical. When the uh, crit lands, you've got a 40% chance to do a bonus attack here. So when we think about the abilities that we're going to be able to do, this one providing the diminish, we have the chance to provide even more stacks of diminish. And of course, once we land those stacks, uh, we can go ahead and uh, get ourselves even more damage on this second skill. So what do you what what would happen if we crit on this ability right here? Um, and it has like three to four stacks. I mean, the damage potential of this unit seems out of this world. I'm really excited to see what it can do. Now, the leader skill that it's going to be bringing, it looks like it's a universal leader skill. While in battle, effect accuracy up for 50%, 15% by all allies here. And I want to take note on something, as you might not be able to see. Effect accuracy on this unit uh, is 70% already. So combine that with the uh, leader skill. It looks like we're it's going to be a little bit easier to rune up. Um, if you are trying to min-max uh, your, your stats and trying to get yourself a fair amount of effect accuracy as well as a critical rate, which, of course, you guys already kind of put two and two together because that's what this unit is built around. So given all we just said, right, how am I going to go ahead and uh, build him? I'm looking to probably do a strike set for him so he can get, correction, a strike set for her so she can go ahead and get, you know, a little bit more attack there since that's uh, what the diminish is based on here. And uh, I might run... I might run a fatal uh, set on the side for a little extra critical rate, uh, or I might run a uh, a focus set on the side for some more effect accuracy. Because again, guys, even though we want to do a ton of damage, we are basically heavily reliant on the uh, diminishing to land so that we can get this multiplier to kick it up a notch here. So again, effect accuracy just is going to be as important as all the other stats that we're looking to bring on with generally for an attacker. So keep that in mind um, as you build them. Now, uh, I'm going to run two slot. I'm going to run the critical rate, obviously. Uh, slot four, I'm going to run HP or defense. And then slot six, I'm going to run attack on her when I build her up. Now, uh, keep in mind that the slot four has the potential to run effect accuracy. But given the fact that she actually has a fair amount of it, um, I don't really think it's necessary. And then, of course, when we combine that with the leader skill, I think we're going to be okay for the time being. Again, you do want a little bit of tankiness, especially when we go up against some of the harder stages in here. And sacrificing effect or HP or defense for some effect accuracy um, is going to be pretty rough. Now, down the road, maybe when we get some crazy six-star legend runes that have effect accuracy with some you know, like super OP, like, you know, HP defensive stats or whatnot, substats or whatever, maybe we could do it. But for right now, starter players out there, I'm going to say strike focus uh, or strike fatal if you do farm the Wailing Labyrinth here so that you can get yourself as much critical rate 
uh, HP and attack on this unit here, and, and, and effect accuracy as well, as well here, okay? So let's go ahead and run right in. Uh, this episode dungeon it provides two different stages. We got the easy and the normal stage here. I've cleared, I've cleared both. We're going to take on the normal stage so you guys can see the boss. Um, and of course, if you if you didn't get a chance to check it out already, similar to the other scenario dungeons out there, um, you're going to have some rewards here once you clear uh, every single stage of three stars. So make sure that even if you are pushing through the content and maybe can't get the three star clear right away, definitely go back so you can get yourself all the rewards. Because as you can see, one of the three rewards are on the bottom. My head's not covering up there, but the is going to be the fragments that you need. And I believe it's going to be 40 fragments since it's an F4 to go ahead and summon it. Um, but the game will give you 50 fragments. Uh, in addition to what you can purchase uh, with your points right up here, okay? So let's go ahead and take on Stage 7, the Fog Shadow Tower. Going to be going up uh, against this boss here, which is really, really cool. We'll take a look at the skills so you guys can get an idea of what we got going on here. High Tides, just a basic ability, attacking with his tail. The next one here provides a draining mechanic so he can get a little bit of life. And then the next one here, an AoE defense break, can, that definitely can uh, you know up the damage that he's going to do on us uh, if we get unlucky. Now, uh, his... Passive here, which is actually kind of nice here. If we land a critical attack on this unit, we're going to gain a diminished effect. So if you are running, um, if you're running, let's say you pull Nightfall and you decide to, you know, level them up and, you know, throw them in here. Not only are we going to get some diminished stacks from Nightfall, but we're also going to get some from here. Um, and then this brings me to the next topic at hand, why I really feel like we should talk about it right now. Uh, this dungeon is going to be opened up for 13 days. Do we take a break of everything that we're farming and work on him? And I'm going to say absolutely yes. Um, the, just everything about his skill set, everything about the potential that could be brought with uh, other units out there that have diminished and effective abilities. If the damage multiplier is really, really good, uh, I think this is going to be a great unit uh, to use for speed clearing after you get the three-star clear. Again, he is a single target Oh my god, fail. I'm sorry. Don't get mad at me in the chat. She is a single target uh, damage dealer, but she she just basically seems like she does a ton of damage. And the potential, if other people on your party have diminishing effect abilities, then this is going to be really, really good. Um, I ain't going to lie. I'm pretty excited to build up a Hex once I get some more uh, shards for him because Hex has a diminishing effect. It's an AoE ability that's really, really nice in addition to some other uh, harmful effects that we can uh, uh, incorporate with her leader skill, uh, you know, bringing in that effect actually. So it's going to help out, you know, land some more debuffs. And uh, I think it's going to be really good once we get it uh, built up here. Now, let's go ahead and run it. I think I'll just run it times two so we could take our time with it again. Um, as far as like uh, the, the whole quest line goes, it's pretty cool. They actually give you uh, a little bit of a quest line. They give you a storyline so that you can follow. And uh, they allow you to use Nightfall in addition to some of the other Nat, uh, nat 4s or correction, Nat 5s out there, Spitfire and Stormland Disability. So if you didn't have a chance to check out those units, you actually get a you actually are able to test it out, which is pretty cool. So as far as the difficulty level on this boss, I don't think it's pretty crazy. But that being said, I am using two out of my three Skylanders are you know some of my best uh, rune Skylanders. And uh, it's a it's it's a free to play comp, so uh, hopefully you guys uh, do have some of these units. Or correction, I hope you guys have at least Kaboom. Uh, I know you got Enigma and Stealth Elf, so you can go ahead and use this one to get the get it in. And like I said, if you have Stealth Elf like myself built um, with the critical hit, you're going to be able to get yourself quite a bit of extra damage to take this one out real real quick. Again, the amount of diminish uh, damage is not a lot, but the, the potential of it stacking uh, over and over and over again. Will just let you uh, take on some of those boss stages, and as, again, if you have if you have Nightfall on your team, uh, it looks like she has the potential to really do some damage here. So again, we'll, we're going to go ahead and test her out down the road right now. I just wanted to kind of show the dungeon so that you can see uh, what we can obtain now. With regards to these Dark Stones, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it here. Uh, the Exchange Shop, so you guys can get an idea of what you can get. Uh, we'll go back and take a look at the Exchange Shop. So. First and foremost, the number one thing that everyone's going to be going up, uh, going for here, uh, we have the Nightfall times four. So 40 pur purchases available, 160 fragments for Nightmail. So it looks to be that we're easily going to be able to pull this unit between the 50 that we can get from the regular uh, quest line. Uh, and this one, we're going to have enough to get this one a five-star max. Now, um, I don't know if basically after that, it's going to come down to if you, if you want to be pay to play to purchase like the uh, 200 fragments or, or you basically just want to use your Omni Stones here. But I'm personally going to try to do what I can uh, to get this one to stick star, uh, 6 star because I'm going to want that additional base stat. Even if I don't get it awakened right away, um, I'm okay with that because, of course, we can summon it. 
uh, through the regular shop there. So we'll be able to get pieces later on down the road. But I want the uh, base stats to be at its highest mark, you know, at level 70, because I want the attack to be as high as possible so that the diminished can have uh, that much more value uh, when it's uh, doing the dots. Uh, so uh, when we look at the uh, rest of the uh, things that we got going on here in the exchange shop, um, nothing really looks too appealing um, outside of the skill ups. Um, with regards to the upgrade stones, you got the small and medium stones. I think those are going to be uh, very, very important. Now, keep in mind that they are pretty expensive. Um, but even even then, I've been farming uh, for not even, I don't even know, maybe uh, uh, two or three hours, uh, if that. And I got already 12,000 pieces of the uh, of the dark stones here. So we're moving right along. I'll probably get the skill ups. I'll probably get the ultra premium ticket. And the five star rune crates here are actually pretty nice here. We got one. Uh, for I guess it's five star for for three of them, and then you got one for five. So you only can buy them one time. Five star runes for me are still uh, I'm still down to take them there, and so you know I'll definitely uh, I'll probably definitely pick those up here down the road. So again, uh, take advantage of this dungeon while it is available. I know you guys got a lot of different people that you are trying to farm, but I truly believe that uh, this is going to be um, you know an easy easy pull for you to get uh, to go ahead and get those pieces. Um, again, 210 pieces between the regular uh, scenario and then this uh, exchange shop. So take advantage of that. And then, of course, over time, we're going to be able to collect some more shards through the summoning so that we can uh, possibly get a six star and awaken. So that's going to be it, guys. Just wanted to give you a brief overview on Nightfall, the new Nat 4 Skylighter here. Uh, let me know what your guys' thoughts on the recommendations. How would you go about building it? What are some of the teams that you're looking to incorporate with the various Skylanders out there in the game? I'm looking to hear your feedback on that, okay? That's that's going to be it, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. It's your boy Childish and Childish Plays checking out. Take care, and we will see you all in the next one. I'm out.